You know, when it comes to that kind of realm of experiencing uh, different environments that you could never access, I mean, that's that's one of the beautiful things about information, period, is you get to experience different worlds the more you can remember. And one of the things that I, I, I love when I saw it, because you don't see it that often, you usually see it the opposite. And I, it makes me want to pull my hair out, even though I'm not really an angry person, um, <laughs> which is that you say, it's okay to memorize things without understanding it, because that can be the path to understanding. That's not exactly how you put it. But um, you talk about that problem of understanding and how that mm-hmm. having it in memory can can lead to the insight that you're looking for. And I was just like, yes, thank you, because... There's so many people, uh, including other memory experts who we don't have to uh, point out uh, because they mean well. But um, they say, you know, no, no, you should understand it before you commit it to memory. So what what called you to to make that critical point that I think you're absolutely correct? I mean, there's so many things I never would have understood if I didn't memorize it first. I just know this from my yeah. own experience. Well, I, I just come at it from the angle that like, if I if I'm trying to learn something, it exists outside of me right it's on wikipedia it's in a book it's in my notes it's on a it's on a thing a physical thing that is not me right um i want to get it inside of me right um in this thing so that is it is part of me and that i don't need to rely on this outside thing um to get it so memory techniques will do that quickly um and yes, you know, how does this work? Well, the techniques, you know, you're turning it into pictures that sometimes and most often don't have anything to do with what the actual information means um, or, or the deeper context of what it means. But I think that's okay because I love the idea that once I can remove it from that external device and carry it with me, I can do whatever I want with it. You know, I can just learn a little bit more about the data that I, I, I just memorized, or I can go on to master it and learn every facet of it. Um, and I have the control and I don't need to rely on a textbook anymore because it's there. Um, I don't know. I love that feeling. You know, it's like the, the example I always give is with presidents, right? If you're learning the presidents, you know, you can come up with 45 different images for the last name of the president and many of them will be very strange images that maybe remind you of the word or, um, you know, just our cue for the word. And it's like an object that has nothing to do with the president at all. But um, like Eisenhower, I always say the image for that should be a pair of eyeballs in a shower, eyes in the shower, right? right? That's not Eisenhower. All the things Eisenhower did, right? Like nothing is those eyeballs have nothing to do with that. So, but that's okay. So once I have the eyeballs in the shower, you know, in my mind, which is unforgettable, we can then talk about, you know, whatever you want. What was his first name? What were the, were the, the years that he served? What did he do notable, notably in his presidency? Um, what is he doing now? And, and who is his wife? All those kinds of things you can then add to the imagery and, and then start to have discussions about, who he was and pull on those pieces of information to kind of expand your knowledge and connection of ideas about him in your brain. So I, I think deeper knowledge starts with, with, with having a good memory of, of, of the things. 